Greetings and welcome to Kim. I'm Catherine of Sky, and I cannot wait to play this game. As soon as I thought saw it, I thought, wow, this is going to be so cool. This is an RPG based on Rudyard Kipling's writings about 1880s India, and I absolutely love, love that time period, so I am very, very anxious to begin. I hope you enjoy it. I've not played this game before, so this is a totally blind playthrough. Let us click to start as the game's already inviting us. Kindly villagers remembering the Dhaka drug vendor of t about two months ago gave him shelter against evil spirits of the wood. He dreams of Bengali gods, university textbooks of education, and the Royal Society London, England. Next dawn, the bobbing blue and white umbrella goes forward. We are in Lahore. Once capital of Ranjit Singh's Sikh Empire, it fell during the Second Anglo-Sikh War. The foe were driven back into Lahore, which was occupied by the British and a treaty signed. This, however, was mostly based, was most basely, treacherously, and perfidiously broken by the Sikhs. Recourse was again had to arms, and then followed the brilliant victories of Chilianwala, fought by Lord Gough, who held the field but at great loss on 13th January 1849, and that of Gujarat, fought by Lord Gough on 21st February 1849. It is surrounded by a brick wall, which was 25 feet high, well mounted with heavy ordnance, and having an excellent trench round the hole, but which has been considerably lowered. The fort, Citadel, lies at the northwest angle of the town and contains large, well-stored magazines and manufactories of warlike implements, etc. Murray's Handbook of the Punjab, Western Rajapunta, Kashmir, and Upper Sindh, 1883. Oh wow, this is an actual photograph from the 1880s. Woo, that is so cool. All right, let's click out of this. And we are in a tutorial as we see by the button. Oh, oh child. So I think this is our character and we are talking to Teshu Lama, Buddhist pilgrim. Opinion 57, age 51. He is short-sighted, slender, generous, and devout. Teshu Lama says, oh child, what is that big house? Ah, I was right. His name is Kim. The Wonder House. What is your caste? Where is your house? Have you come far? I came by Kulu from beyond the Kailas, but what know you? From the hills where, sigh, the air and water are fresh and cool. A guru from Tibet, I have not seen such a man. They are Hindus in Tibet then? We are followers of the middle way, living in peace and our lamasaries, and I go to see the four holy places before I die. He turned his head like an old tortoise in the sunlight. <laughs> what a description. It is long since I have eaten or drunk. What is the custom of charity in this town? In silence as we do in Tibet or speaking aloud? Those who beg in silence starve in silence. Give me the bowl. I know the people of this city, all who are charitable. Give and I will bring it back filled. Okay, so let's go this way. Here we are top-down view. I love the graphics in this game. It is so cool. Let's see who's here. Ah, we are having Mumad Dugal, Muslim grocer, opinion 42, age 56. He is cowardly, athletic, grumpy, and poor. Oh, well, that's very unfortunate. Let's beg for the Lama. There is a new priest in the city, a man such as I have never seen. Old priest, young tiger, I am tired of new priests. They settle on our wares like flies. Is my father a well of charity to give to all who ask? He is rather yagi, bad-tempered, than yogi. Come, friend, fill me this bowl. He waits. That bowl indeed, that cow-bellied basket. The bowl was returned full of hot rice. So he's grumpy, but he is generous. Um, let's just say thank you. The grocer popped a fried cake on top. Oh, so he was extra generous here. That's very nice. Okay. Um, so, oh, here, is this our guy? Oh, yes, it is. The llama. They ate together in great content, clearing the begging bowl, and then sat in quiet satisfaction as the light faded. I think that so old a man as you, speaking the truth to chance, met people, is in great need of a disciple. Why, yes, you can be my cella, and I can 
teach you the law. By this I know that I shall find a certain river for which I seek, the river of the arrow, which washes away all taint and speckle of sin. Let us begin our search. Not by night, thieves are about. Wait till the day. But there is no place to sleep. The old man was used to the order of his monastery, and though he slept on the ground as the rule decrees, preferred a decency in these things. We shall get good lodging at the Kashmir Sarai. I have a friend there. Come. All right, so let's go somewhere. Ah, we will go here. Bring our llama with us. Okay, this is Mabub Ali, horse trader. Opinion 52, age 49. Ooh, he has a weapon, a Lancaster. And he's protective, robust, strong, and gr <laughs> grumpy. I wonder if everyone in this game is grumpy. <laughs> okay, so let us ask him for a place to sleep. The horse trader, his deep embroidered bokariot belt unloosed, was lying on a pair of silk carpet saddlebags, pulling lazily at an immense silver hookah. Continue. Little friend of all the world, what is this? I am now that holy man's disciple, and we go on a pilgrimage together. Mabu puffed his hookah in silence, then he began almost whispering. Do this for me. In Umbala you will find a sahib called Colonel Creighton. Let it be known to him that a horse, a white stallion which I have sold to an officer the last time I returned from the passes, has had its pedigree established. He turned, feeling on the floor beside him, and tossed a flap of soft, greasy bread to the boy. And for, and all for the sake of a white stallion. <laughs> you may lie down among my horse boys, you and the llama. Return soon. You are always welcome here. The bread held a hundred rupees, enormous largesse. He knew he had rendered a service to Mabub Ali, and not for one little minute did he believe the tale of the stallion's pedigree. So he was just being very kind to us. That's very nice. Okay, what are we clicking on now? Oh, look at this. There's hearts and there is happiness. Maybe that's um, food. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, this is fatigue. Fatigue increases when awake and decreases when asleep. That makes sense. So let's go to, okay, sleeps to reduce your fatigue. So let's sleep. I'm guessing that's 12 hours. Oh, wow. Looks night. Okay, you are free to explore, but be careful. India can be a harsh place for one so young. Carry food, eat regularly, and get enough sleep. As you travel, speak to people. This is your youth. Make the most of it. When you turn 18, this story will end, but you may retell it as many times as you wish. The labels below show what each button does. Okay, cool. So let's look at this. This is health. Food, medicine, and happiness increase health. Well, that's nice. So we have some food. We've got um, all kinds of interesting looking food. This is probably the rice. I'm thinking that looks like bread. And this is some um, very fancy looking things, I have to say. Let's just leave that alone for now because we're, we're at most health. Let's see happiness. Happiness grows as you acquire merit and stay healthy. Okay, great. So we need to do stuff to be happy. That makes sense. And this is options. Okay. The map. Oh, there's a meowing thing. Oh my gosh, that must be a cat. Okay, I'll go look at it in a second. Map. This map shows the towns, roads, and railroads of northern India and what climate to expect in each area from desert to mountains. Kim's objectives are flagged in their locations. Select the warrants button to see where Kim might run into trouble with the police and the buildings button to find out what each town has to offer. Okay. So, looks like we already have one quest marker over here. So let's just... Oh, there is a cat! Is that a cat? Oh, whoops. Ooh, what's there? Townhouse. This door's lock could only withstand a rudimentary pick. Someone inside. Oh, we don't want to pick the lock when there's people inside. Is there anything here? Oh, there's the person going out. Okay, so let's see what else we have. This is suitcase. Kim's suitcase holds all his earthly possessions. Use it to change his outfit or weapon and interact with the items he has collected. Track Kim's stats on their panels, then they determine his proficiency in the various actions he can take. Don't neglect merit. Holy men are much revered. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. 
So it looks like we can carry all of 100 pounds. What is this? Sweet meats. Ah, nice. Okay, so tells us 10 hours of no hunger. One health, five happiness. Okay. Rice. Um, and each of these, wow, minus 10 fatigue. That's good. This is this nice bread. And what is this again? Tattered clothes. This must be what we're wearing. Ah, okay. So tattered clothes is what we're wearing. Fists, I'm guessing, are our weapon. And, um, okay, let's get out of this. Ah, notebook. Okay. Ken's notebook records all of his objectives, which are often requests from other characters. Some have a deadline to prioritize these. People will show their appreciation for Kim's help in a variety of ways. You can also view objectives which have a location on the map. Okay, cool. So our first is find the River of the Arrow and then deliver a message in Umbala. So what is this last one? Stealth mode. You've activated stealth mode. Now you can see where other people are looking but Kim will move slower as he looks around him. This is useful if you're worried people might object to whatever Kim is getting into. Turn stealth mode on and off with the right bottom button. Okay, that's cool. So as in picking that lock of the house there. Let's see, what what is this? This is a, um, ah, Hunifa's house, a spooky smoking parlor. All right. Kim climbed a filthy staircase into the warm darkness of an upper chamber in the ward that is behind Azim Ullah's tobacco shop. Those who know it call it the bird cage. It is so full of whisperings and whistlings and chirrupings. The room, with its dirty cushions and half-smoked hookahs, smelt abominably of stale tobacco. In one corner lay a huge and shapeless woman clad in greenish gauzes and decked brow, nose, ear, neck, wrist, arm, waist, and ankle with heavy native jewelry. When she turned it was like a clashing of copper pots. A lean cat in the balcony outside the window mewed hungrily. Kim checked, bewildered, at the door curtain. This is Hunifa, Muslim devil worshipper. Wow. <laughs> oh, Buktanus, is that the new stuff? Like most of her kind, she wore, she swore by the jinns. Who are you? I'm Hunifa, and you're the one they call friend of all the world. Mabub Ali's errand boy. I know your voice. You have come for a blessing from the old gods, if that is what they are. What protection can they offer me? You lack the strength for this black magic boy. Come back when you are stronger. Okay. I am seeing there's all kinds of adventures we can go on here. Oh, here's a here's a, a station of happiness here. This is Hassan Rathor, Muslim letter writer. Oh, how nice. Minus 7% prices. Um, miserly, nepotist, jolly, strong, clumsy. Okay, and we have... Uh, ask the letter writer if he's heard any bizarre gossip that might be profitable to share. Um, I don't know how much money we have. Is that in my thing here? Hmm. I'm not seeing how much money do we have. Do we have 10 or do we have... I don't know. Well, let's talk to him about the newspaper. What is this newspaper the sahibs read? Newspaper? That's the pioneer. I have sent them many letters, but without reply. Where does it come from? It is printed in Allahabad. You can see the building there. They write it and print it all under one roof. Do you want to become a writer? Maybe one day. Okay, let's talk about getting on. I want to get on in the world. You read the letters of the high and mighty. Where do they gather to conduct their business? The sahibs go to the Gimhank, Gimkana Club in Delhi, but you will never be allowed in there. We'll see. And let's talk about Muslim. You must be a Muslim. How often do you pray? Whenever I can, boy, as should you. When you hear the call, look west and kneel. I'll listen out. Okay, so his opinion has increased about us because we're asking about his religion. Oh, wow, get a Muslim outfit. That's a, a new thing. Okay, do you not know much about Lahore? Lahore is a proud city, once a capital in its own right with the landmarks to show for it. The shopping, however, is limited. There's not much to choose from, and the prices are quite high. There is a doctor, though. They've helped me before. So it looks like the best option is to 
not um, buy stuff because he's saying things are pretty expensive here. Let's see this guy. Can I talk to you? This is Ahil Jadun, Muslim guard. Oh, he's depressed. How sad. Okay. Is there anybody else to talk to? You know what? I'm going to go to the market again. Be uh, should I beg for the llama? No, I don't think I'll beg for the llama. Price 4 3. I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean that it's 4 here and 3 is the average price? Hmm. Okay, let's get out of here. And let's just keep going around this, um, this city square. This is a house? Okay. I don't have... Oh, I do have a pick, don't I? Um... I could go in stealth mode. Let's go here. Pick the lock. We're gonna start our life of crime. Oh dear. Pick. Okay, I had a little hiccup there. Let's try that again. Oh, for some reason I can't pick the lock. Okay. I don't know why. Maybe I don't have lock picking tools and it's just not telling me I can't. Okay. Let's go to the Sikh doctor. Ah, this is Ranbir Singha Gojia. Sikh doctor, opinion 52, age 43. He has a weapon which is a Qatar. So, they like me and are giving it my, me minus 2% prices. He's devout, observant, fat, clumsy, and greedy. Okay? Alright, let's talk about being a Sikh. You are a Sikh, so tell me, are Sikhs the greatest warriors? Not I. My war is with the selfishness within. You would make a fine Sikh. Join us. Maybe one day. So, it looks like we're getting all kinds of different options as to religions and things. Oh, I'm hungry. So let's eat. Um, let's have this rice. Let's just eat that. Okay, so that has increased that a little bit. Okay, it seems. Oh, what's this building? This is like a. Oh, the Wonder House. Oh, that's right. That's where we started out. The museum, which is called by the Indians. Ajayb Ger was constructed for the Punjab exhibition of 1864 and was to have been replaced by one better adapted for a museum, but funds have not been forthcoming. On a raised platform in front of the entrance is the famous gun called the Zam Zama, meaning a lion's roar. On the table in the entrance hall is a book in which visitors are expected to enter their names, and there are also Mr. Baden Powell's works, Punjab Products and Pujam. Punjab manufacturers. In the central aisle will be seen a series of portraits hung between the arches representing princes and chiefs of the Punjab. They are by an Indian artist, as specimens of art cannot be much praised. Specimens of the manufacturers of the province will be found in the cases. Murray's Handbook of the Punjab, Western Rajapunta, Kashmir, and Upper Sindh, 1883. Here's another historical photograph. Oh, they're so beautiful. It's so cool to see the culture from so long ago. That's neat. Okay. Oh, we can enter. Yay, let's do that. Kim clicked round the turnstile. In the entrance hall stood the larger figure, figures of the Greco-Buddhist sculptures done, savants know how long since, by forgotten workmen whose hands were feeling, and not unskillfully, for the mysteriously transmitted Grecian touch. Hi, my... There were hundreds of pieces, friezes of figures in relief, fragments of statues and slabs crowded with figures that had encrusted the brick walls of the Buddhist stupas and viharas of the North Country and now, dug up and labeled, made the pride of the museum. Uh, I don't want to pick one up. Uh, this is probably like stealing one. Let's find the sahib. Kim dodged sideways among the cases of the arts and manufacturer's wing. A white-bearded Englishman was looking at him. Lockwood Kipling is his name. He's curator of Wonder House. His opinion is 72, so I'm glad I didn't steal anything. Um, <laughs> we don't want to make him upset. He's jolly, generous, and short-sighted. Come in! What can I do for you? 
His office was but a little wooden cubicle partitioned off from the sculpture-lined gallery. Sahib, a holy man from Tibet wishes to visit thee. A llama from Tibet? Well, tell him here be the images, and I am here. I'll welcome him. Okay, so let's take the llama. Can I talk to him? Let's go to Wonder House. The Wonder House is open now. It is written above the door. All can enter. Shall I take you there? Is it true there are many images in the Wonder House of Lahore? He repeated the last words as one, making sure of an address. Come with me and I will show. In open-mouthed wonder, the Lama turned to this and that, and finally checked in rapt attention before a large altar relief representing a coronation or apotheosis of the Lord Buddha. The Lord, the Lord, it is Sakyamuni himself! The Lama half-sobbed under his breath, began the wonderful Buddhist invocation. To him the way, the law apart, whom Maya held beneath her heart, Ananda's lord, the Bodhisihat, and he is here. The most excellent law is here also. My pilgrimage is well begun. Out shuffled the Lama to the main hall, and the curator beside him went through the collection with the reverence of a devotee and the appreciative instinct of a craftsman. Um... I will learn about the dress and customs of different peoples, because that's what I like. Finally, the Lama rose and bowed a solemn farewell to the curator. When I return, I will bring you a written picture of the Padma Samthora, such as I used to make on silk at the Lamasari. Yes, and of the Wheel of Life. The curator would have detained him. They are few in the world who have still who still have the secret of the conventional brush pen, Buddhist pi pardon me, the curator would have detained him. They are few in the world who still have the secret of the conventional brush pen Buddhist pictures, which are, as it were, half written and half drawn. But the Lama strode out, head high in the air. Okay. And unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode, but I am thoroughly enjoying this game so far. The music is delightful, and I can't wait until um, I see you tomorrow. Um, so thank you so very much for joining me. I'm Catherine of Skye, and I'll see you next time.